Today, I'm gonna to show you my favorite data sufficiency trick. It's called the value hack, and it lets you answer any data sufficiency question that asks you for a specific value, like how much was the store's revenue or what's the value of X? You're gonna be able to knock down 700 level questions in about a minute using this technique. Also, just for showing up today, I have a free gift for you. Three simple strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. These are the very same strategies I teach all of my private students, they're super effective, they kick in immediately, they're gonna help you a lot, and hey, they are free, just download in the description. Okay, let's get on to the data sufficiency. Data sufficiency, tips and tricks, the value hack. This is based on a very simple but very powerful concept. If the test asks you what's the value of X and it gives you X plus Y equals 100, can you tell the exact value of X? No, you don't know, it depends on the value of Y. But if the test also gives you Y equals 4X, now you can totally solve for X. Just substitute in 4X for Y, do some algebra, and you see that X equals 20. So from that comes an incredibly useful math fact that appears all over the test. If you have two variables, you must have two equations in order to solve for an exact value. If you got three variables, you need three equations. Four variables, you need four equations, etc. Because that math fact is true, you now have an incredibly powerful and incredibly simple strategy. Anytime the GMAT asks you a data sufficiency question that requires a specific value for a specific variable, this is what I want you to do. Count the number of variables and the number of equations they give you in the question stem. There will always be more variables than equations. Then look at each individual statement. A statement will be sufficient if it gives you enough equations to equal the number of variables. And this is important. Don't solve it. We don't care how much money the store made. We don't care how many black socks there are. Just know that if you have the same number of equations as you have variables, it can be solved and the statement is sufficient. I know that all of this seems a little theoretical, so let's do a real world example. An intern at a Hollywood studio bought coffee for the entire crew. She purchased 30 cups of coffee in small, medium, and large sizes. How many large coffees did she buy? Okay, first step, we always go back to the question stem and pick out exactly what we've been asked to do and write it down. In this case, we've been asked to find the exact value of L. Great. Okay, next step, we go to the question and we write down any equations that were given in the question. And in this case, the equation they give us is S plus M plus L equals 30. Okay, so now we notice that we're given one equation, but we got three variables. Now remember the strategy. We need an equation for each variable. So we have three variables, so we have to have a total of three equations. Now they already gave us one equation in the question stem, so we're looking for two more equations. Let's check each statement and see if we get them. All right, statement one says 15 coffees are not small and 20 coffees are not medium. Okay, what does that mean in math? 15 coffees are not small, that means M plus L equals 15. And 20 coffees are not medium, in math that means S plus L equals 20. We were looking for two more equations and we got them. That is sufficient. What about number two? Statement two says there are five more small coffees than medium coffees and five fewer large coffees than medium coffees. What does that mean in math? Five more small coffees than medium coffees means S equals M plus five and five fewer large coffees than medium coffees. In math, that means L equals M minus five. You know what? We were looking for two more equations. We got two more equations. That is also sufficient. This is answer choice D. And notice what we didn't do. We didn't calculate what L is. We don't care how many large coffees there are. We just care that we have enough information in order to solve for L. Okay, so I know what some of you are thinking. Really, all I have to do is count equations and count variables? Is this always gonna work? Well, the short answer is, yeah, darn near always. You're gonna use this strategy when you are being asked to solve for a specific value and you're given equations in the statements. And sometimes they might give you math equations. Sometimes they might give you equations in word problem form, just like we did on the example. This strategy will work about 90% of the time. Occasionally, maybe 10% of the time, they might try and trick you. Don't get paranoid, they don't do it very often. And if you keep watching the videos, we'll show you how to spot when they're trying to trick you. 
All right, nice job, that's how it works. Now I know at the beginning it's a little hard to trust this technique, really all I have to do is count equations and count variables. As you use it more and more, what you're gonna find is you simply get to the right answer consistently, accurately, and really fast. Also, don't forget about your free gift, three simple strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. It's yours for free, just download it in the description. All right, great job, we'll see you next time.